Hi, everyone, and welcome to another exciting webinar hosted by webautomation.io. And in today's webinar, we're going to be talking about the exciting topic of price comparison sites, and in particular, how you can use web scraping um, as an advantage to building a successful comparison site. Um, so the agenda, we're going to talk generally how price comparison sites work, how you can make money, um, and then we'll talk about building a successful price comparison site, um, explain how you can use web scraping to get you there, and then we'll go into a demo and show you how you can get data from websites to power your price comparison sites in minutes using webautomation.io. So how do price comparison sites work? Um, so essentially what comparison sites do is they aggregate information around prices, products, description, pictures, put everything into a very nice user-friendly aggregated view for users to be able to compare um, prices across multiple retailers, brands, and suppliers. And then typically, the websites would have a relationship with the different suppliers um, where they get an exchange um, of money in return for promoting those products. So how do you make money on a comparison site? Uh, there are three big ways. Um, the first way and the most popular is affiliate marketing, which we'll discuss in detail on the next slide. The second is through um, a commission structure where you can get a commission um, directly by negotiating with the brand or supplier. And then you can do some adverts. So you could have banners on your sites and, and placements where you get paid for advertising different products just because of the traffic you have from your comparison sites. So let's talk affiliate marketing, which is the biggest source of income for a price comparison sites. So how does this work? Um, it works very simply as a customer visits your site, um, which would have some sort of niche content. Um, and then on that site, you would obviously promote multiple different products and, and retailers and brands. And you facilitate the transaction between the customer buying that product um, and being able to um, allow the customer to buy whatever products that you're promoting. And in exchange, you get um, between one to 10% generally of that sale. Uh, another point we should talk about is affiliate networks, which is essentially the middleman that facilitates transactions between your website um, and the brands and suppliers. They will typically deal with um, all the data transfer um, or tracking commissions. Um, or even tracking the people that come through um, all the various links. So I've put a list of the most popular affiliate networks globally. Um, so you can have a check and see which one of them have some exciting products for your comparison sites. So what are the steps now to build a successful comparison site? The very first step is you need to pick a niche. Um, there's a comparison site for everything these days. Um, so you really need to stand out by picking a segment of um, users or products that's underserved um, where you can really um, stand out. So it could be something as niche as um, snowboards um, or even some sort of service, um, but the niche it's always better, especially when you're starting out. Then you need to find your products. So you have picked the niche now you need to find all the different websites or companies that uh, will sell that product and would allow you to promote that product on their behalf. So if we take an example, which I'm going to demonstrate in a minute of if we were to start a, a laptop comparison site, um, we would obviously need to find all the retailers, brands and manufacturers that sell a laptop and write a list. And then we will need to understand if these brands will pay us some sort of commission for promoting their products. 
The next thing you have to do is be able to identify features um, or enrichment opportunities, which you can make unique to your site and attract more people to come to your site. So gone are the days where you could just list out a table of prices and products um, and expect users to be satisfied. Um, you need to bring in additional features. I've taken a screenshot from a, a global comparison site called PriceSpy. What they've done is they've added a new feature called price history. Um, and that gives a user the trend of how the prices are going. Um, and the user can then make a more intelligent decision. This feature only exists on their site. So it's another reason why I come to their site. So for your comparison site, it could be um, you could have alerts, um, you could have different kinds of features, uh, but always having that feature, which is only unique to your site, is usually another reason um, why your comparison site to be successful. Now, the most important part and the most challenging part is getting that data. So you need the data feed of all the products and prices to be able to display on your website. But how do you get that information? First of all, you can go directly to the merchants or the brands or the suppliers and ask them, please give me a feed of all your products and prices so I can promote for you. This doesn't really work very well, especially with smaller companies as they don't have the capacity to send thousands of um, fresh feeds of data on a daily basis. Um, so we go on to the next option, which is using a third party. This is probably the most mature way of, of getting your data and more structured. So this would include things like um, affiliate networks and um, software houses where they'll be the middleman between the supplier and your website and they'll facilitate any data transfer or track any commissions. But in exchange, um, they take a fee um, or some sort of cut of your revenue. Um, so that obviously eats into your profits. For me, the most controlled way and the most scalable way is to scrape the data yourself. And I'll explain why. Firstly, if you're able to get the data directly from your supplier's website, um, that's great because you have control. You can get a live feed of whatever products and, and prices are available and display that onto your sites. So you have that control. Um, you could also get your data very timely. Um, so no need to wait till a data feed is ready from a third party or no need to blame any third party for sending incorrect data. Um, you can control everything if you decide to web scrape that data directly. You can get what you want when you want it. So that concludes the um, background of how you get a, a, a understand how to use a price comparison site and how it works. What I'm going to be doing next is giving you a live demo of how you can extract data and using web automation in minutes. Welcome back guys. Um, now I'm gonna show you how to extract data from, use, from any website using webautomation.io and use that to power your price comparison site. Um, so today I'm gonna to be scraping laptops. Um, I'm gonna use Argos, which is a very famous retailer in the UK. And I'm gonna be scraping all MacBooks from Argos. So I'm going to go into web automation. The very first thing I need to do is I need to check through the ready-made extractors and see if there's an available extractor for Argos. I mean, we can scroll down or we can just search. And I can see one already exists for Argos. So that's great. I can get my data really quickly. Um, I can check it out and see some sample data. Uh, and then I can just use for free. Um, and then get this. So really all I need to do um, is to specify the starter, starter links, which essentially is a search URL or 
um, a, a link that explains which products you want to scrape. So I'll go into Argos again, and I've already got a filter for all the MacBooks, 16 of them. I'll copy this link and I'll paste it in here. And I'll save. That's really all I need to do. Um, and I go back in here and I can run this now to get my data straight away. And then I go into the data tab and I can see it started and this will complete in a few seconds. So I can see now that it's completed. Um, all I need to do is download the data. Um, I like Excel, so I'm gonna try and download it in XLS. I also got a notification on my email. Um, and then I can try open it now to see what the data looks like. Ah, voila. So I can see technology, I can see a category description for the MacBooks, the image, um, the, the name, which is over here. It is an old price, a price, um, and a product code, and the review count and the URL. So I have my data, I have all my prices. Now I can scrape from other retailers and be able to compare prices. So that's the easiest way to get data using Web Automation. I'll show you two other ways. Um, the other way you can do it is you can go in our home and you can get one of our experts to help you. Um, just all I need to do is copy the product page that has the data I'm looking for, put this into our tool and I can start. Now the tool is gonna analyze the page to understand what kind of technology it's used in the page, what's the best way to get the data, um, and if there's anything blocking us from being able to get our data. Um, takes less than a couple of minutes and we'll be ready to go. Okay, we are completed now and we can have two options. So we can create one for you for free um, or you can use our visual point and click tool. I'll show you both of them. So start with a free option. Um, so all you need to do essentially is explain, um, I would like to spray Apple Pop. As simple as that, um, the guys could understand what you mean. You can also circle out what you wanted just to make it very clear. So our people, um, once you have circled out all the things you want, um, you save the request form and in 24 hours, someone will contact you telling you that your web scraper is ready to run and you can push the button. As this is a live form, I don't wanna push the button, but you guys get the point. I'll go back and use and show you how to use the visual point and click tool. Uh, which is really awesome. Um, saves you from doing any kind of coding. You can just point and click. It also helps you remove pop-ups. Um, and then you can see, so you can see as I hover my mouse around stuff, I can select the items I want. So the first thing is highlighted here, description. So I'm gonna look for a description. And it's over here and I'm just gonna select the description. I can save it. And then I need to get to name, so I'm going to switch to name. And I'm going to look for the name. This is the name of the product. I'm going to select it and save. Uh, and then I'm going to go to price. I'm going to look for the price, which is over here. I'm going to save this. If I wanted to add a new category, I could add, um, say, category, for example, and I can create a new column. And then I can choose category, which is um, laptops and PCs. I can see. So I can now see the columns I have. I have category, price, name, and description. I'm happy with that. I'll go next. Now, this is where the magic happens. I just need to tell the extractor what kind of data I want. 
So I'll do that by doing two things. First of all, I'm going to put in the starter link, which explains exactly where I want my extractor to visit. So I've already got the filter down here. I'm just going to copy the filter, which is filters out only MacBooks. I'll put that in here, save. And then I'm going to put in some um, allow and deny rules. So this is just going to tell the extractor, please visit only pages that have this URL pattern. So I know because I'm used to scraping Argos that every product in Argos has this forward slash product. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste this rule in here and I can save it. That's it. I'm done. I can test my extractor now and I can see if I'm going to get back any results. And good. And it's a live feedback. So we can wait and see what's going on. We can see we started getting some rows, some data is coming through. You can see live data coming through. We can see a table and I can see my data is looking good. Good, good, good. Um, it was an okay score, but just for demonstration, this is good enough. So I'm going to carry on and move to next. Um, then I can choose to either schedule the extractor to run at that interval um, tomorrow, next tomorrow, in 12 hours, or I could just run it now. And I'm going to run it now uh, and then go to data section. And then it started, and then in a few seconds, it's going to be ready for, for us to be able to um, extract the data. So we'll just wait a few seconds. And now we can see that the status is complete. So we can download the data again in XLS Excel format, save, and we can have a look and see if we have our data as we want it. Um, this is the old data, so we can wait. I can get. I got a notification again, so I can see. Uh, I've got my data, um, so I can see. I got the category, got the description, got the name, got the price, um, got the URL. So that shows you how you can quickly get data in three different ways using WebAutomation.io. So this ends the webinar for today. Um, in the webinar, I've been able to show you the basics of a price comparison website and how to get data to power your price comparison websites.